So springtime is upon us and we're here today at Hillview in Tewkesbury. Lovely little venue. Um, I've come up here throughout the last few years, fishing opens, midweek, on the weekend. It's absolutely stacked full of F1s, carp, the barbel. There's everything in air chub. Um, and today we're here, we've, we're leaving the maggots and we're leaving the casters and we're leaving the micros and the expanders at home. And we're gonna come and fish hard pellets, meat and corn. Proper springtime baits. So why hard pellets, corn meat? Well, coming into springtime now, the fish, throughout the winter, they've been balled up in the middle. It's been a lot of like maggot fishing, sort of chucking pieces of bread out to the fish. Now they're coming on the feed. They're coming in close. They want to eat some bait. And uh, hard pellets, meat and corn, for me, springtime baits don't get any better. So plan of attack today, I'm gonna start off with hard pellets. It's a bait that I will always start off on. It is, it's, the, it's one of the only baits which is literally instant. You can go in on your short line and you can catch fish right from the off. And that is my plan of attack really. I'm gonna be starting short. I found about four foot of water just on the slope, which to me is probably ideal to start off with this time of year. And all the time, I'm gonna be pinging pellets long where we're looking to catch some F1 shallow. It's a lovely day today, it's nice and warm and uh, I think they're gonna be coming up today. It's, it's very deep out there. I say very deep, it's sort of seven foot deep. It's not, for me, it's not the sort of depth where you're gonna win matches from. Um, you're gonna catch odd fish down there, but these fish are gonna to wanna to come up today. So that's the two main of a, lines of attack to start the day off. Short on pellets while I build up my shallow line long. And that's how we're gonna go and we're gonna take it from there. So two other baits which I always take with me is meat and corn. The margins down here, they're, they, they sort of vary really. You can have some margins which are, which are great for fishing other baits, 18 inches where you can put your micros and bits and bobs in, but a lot of the margins down here are sort of three foot deep and corn for me being a nice heavy bait is perfect for the margins. So that's where I'm looking to sort of target later on in the match. And also another bait which I will never go without, I will always take it to nearly every venue I go to is meat. And the reason why is where pellets is an instant response, meat later on in the match is, is a world beater. So the amount of times that I've got, I'm sort of plodding along, not really going anywhere. And then the last two hours, they switch onto that meat and you can go from literally from zero to hero. So it's one bait that we'll go through today um, and I'll show you how to get the best out of it. We're gonna start off with our pellets short now. No need for a big pot or nothing like that. We're literally gonna go in and we're gonna throw a few pellets over the top and see if we get a reaction. So I'm just starting off with a six mil hard pellet and I'm just throwing a few six mils over the top. I always like to start on six mils. You tend to pick out some. If there's any sort of nice big wary carp swimming past, you might nick one straight away. The rig's really pretty straightforward really. It's just a four, four by 14 rube with a bulk in one dropper, your standard sort of rig. And really, I'm looking, if, I'm looking really to fish this, get a response. Obviously, if this was in a match, I'd be looking around at what people, how people are catching and everything. But it, this to me is a sort of a method which, oh, a little indication then where literally sometimes you can get an instant response. You can catch two or three carp really early. So that's what we're looking to do. It's not about chucking handfuls of bait in at the minute. It's just literally about trickling a few over the top, waiting for a bite and taking it from there. So elastic choice, it's a white strict seven elastic, number 10. You're looking at catching sort of F1s, you might catch the odd silver on here and carp, so it's a nice all-rounder. Rig-wise, it is it's quite straightforward, really. You fish an O20 mainline, 
I've got a 4x14 Mormon Rube. Oh, that's a nice fish. And it couldn't be any simpler, really. Oh, 16 hook length down to a 16 sphere beast hook. And it's just a case of a bolt, really, and one dropper. There's no need to get all fancy with this sort of fish in. So this is all about, oh, here we go. This is all about being patient, this method. We see a lot of people, if they're not getting bites within a couple of minutes, they just keep feeding, keep feeding, keep feeding. To me, this is all about trying to catch a few wary early fish before they sort of back off a little bit. So less can sometimes be definitely better than, look at that, that's a nice F1. Less is definitely more sometimes. You're literally chucking a few pellets at your float and you're waiting for indications. F1s, it's important to try and find the depth that they're comfortable feeding at. I mean, when it comes to summertime, you're, they, it's sometimes ridiculous. They can come up, you can catch them six inches deep. But obviously being quite early on in spring, I'm not expecting them to come up that shallow. But because when I was on this short line and I was feeding a bit of bait and I seen the odd sort of vortex on the water, look at that they are probably gonna come up a bit shallower than what I was expecting. So I've started off at like 16 inch. And what I do, if I stop getting bites, I'll just drop down and put my, my slightly deeper again. It's all about really, you don't wanna be, you wanna be trying to catch them because they, they come up to feed. You wanna be trying to ca catch them at the sort of, the right depth, so you don't want to be getting like loads of indications. If you're getting loads of indications, foul hook fish, obviously that's a good indication that you're fishing a little bit too too deep. And obviously, if you're not getting any sort of indications at all, you're fishing too shallow. So really, it's just about chopping and changing, really, till you find a depth where you feel you're in the perfect sort of feeding zone. Well, you're not getting lots of indications, but when you do get one, it's a nice bite. It's all about sort of flicking the rig over a couple of times and always try and keep a tight line to your float. Because by doing that, you'll find that most of them you will catch, that you won't even need to, you don't need to strike. If you're trying to hit bites from these F1s, you're getting a right palaver. It's all about sort of feeding, just trying to get into a nice routine. For, sort of flicking the rig over a couple of times and as it's falling through the water, holding a tight line and then most of the time your elastic could just come streaming out. It's all about getting in the rhythm really. Trying to work out how much to feed, what depth they're feeding at. Sometimes you can catch a lot of fish slapping and other times there's a lot of Time it can be better just holding your rig tight and just feeding over the top. So we've got a good couple of hours left now. I'm still catching on my shallow line, which is good. Mainly all F1s, but now is the time I'm looking to prime my short line and my margin line. Reason being, although I'm gonna still carry on catching, it's slightly different to your pellet, short, short, short pellet fishing when you go straight in and it's instant at the start. With meat fishing, you're looking to build it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna introduce, not a lot, maybe, I'll get my big pot out, 80, pieces of meat short, and then down my eggs, I'm looking to feed corn, which 
I'm going to feed that a bit more aggressively. Now, rig wise, short, slightly different to your pellet rig. Your pellet rig is just a your simple bulk in one dropper. With meat, personally, I like fishing it with a bit more of a strung out, especially when you're fishing on slopes. A little bit more of a strung out rig and slightly lighter. So I've got a 4x12 Rube carbon stem, which is important. And I've just got like a, a sort of spread number nines going across there of a six inch up length to a size 13 beast hook. The reason for this is I'm looking to sort of flick my rig out past, just where I'm past where I'm feeding and you do find as it's falling through the water, just as it's, just before it hits the bottom, you do sometimes get some dinks, which turn out after time to be the biggest, wariest carp. So it's, it's although it's very similar to fishing pellets, there is a few slight differences that I make, which put an extra few fish in your net. So my margin rig, I'm looking at fishing three foot today. It's not quite summertime. I can't, I've had a good old plum up down there and I can get into slightly shallow water. However, today I feel three foot is gonna be, it's, an opt, it's a real nice sort of depth in spring. Um, rig wise, it's pretty simple really. It's just a four by 12 rube, a six inch hook length, again, a size 13 beast hook, which is ideal for fishing single or double corn. And it's just literally a bulk in one dropper. Nothing, nothing fancy. It's quite simple fishing, really, when you're fishing in three foot water. If I was fishing in shallower water, I'd probably be looking at sort of using a slightly heavier float because obviously you get a bit more sort of movement in the water column. But when you're fishing in three foot, real simple. Coming towards the end of the day now, and it's been brilliant to be honest. We caught a load of fish early, short, on pellets, before it dried up. And then we went long, where we caught shallow, all throughout the middle of what would have been a match, or your pleasure session. And then we've come in short, and I was quite expecting it really to be, because it's been so good, I was expecting it to just to be absolutely solid, but it hadn't quite been like that. But that's typical of your springtime fishing. We've come in and we caught two straight away and I thought this is going to be crazy. And then all of a sudden it's just gone really quiet. So I've gone down the edge and I nicked two fish straight away. And again, the same thing happened. There you go. The same thing happened, which is typical for me of like your springtime fishing, which just goes to show that you just can't rely on just thinking, oh, I'm going to fish down the eggs in three foot of water and they're going to rock up because it's not always like that. Whereas, without a shadow of a doubt, the best thing to do today was to catch one or two fish short and then prime it. And as you're priming it, you go down your eggs, you catch one or two fish down there and repeat. And by doing it that way, it definitely is put more fish in in your net, which can make all the difference really in matches. So I think we're uh, finish on that one. A lovely F1, around about three pound, which has been typical today, a lot of three, four pound fish. So if you're going out, that was springtime. Just bear in mind a few of the things that I've sort of mentioned today and you should put a few more fish in your net.